evening. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I thought we were supposed to keep it concise, and these guys are ad-libbing their intros and everything. So um, I just want to say, Ellen, I came, for, I came to first know Ellen through her fabulous book and her work with survivors, uh, the book uh, The Courage to Heal, or The Courage to Heal. Um, uh, and that's how I came to know her in her nonfiction work. But we're here for poetry tonight, so I'm going to read you what I wrote about uh, Ellen Bass is a master, pure writer, a mentor, a teacher, and a poet, the winner of awards and prizes too numerous to mention. Ellen is published in hundreds of anthologies and journals, the author of A Courage to Heal. Her most recent book of poems is titled The Human Line. It's my great honor to introduce to you Ellen Bass. <laughs> Relax. Bad 
bad things are going to happen. <laughs> your tomatoes will grow a fungus and your cat will get run over. <laughs> Someone will leave the bag with the ice cream melting in the car and throw your blue cashmere sweater in the dryer. <laughs> your husband will sleep with a girl your daughter's age, her breasts spilling out of her blouse. Or your wife will remember she's a lesbian and will leave you for the woman next door. <laughs> the other cat, the one you never really liked, will contract a disease that requires you to pry open its feverish mouth every four hours. <laughs> your parents will die. No matter how many vitamins you take, how much Pilates, you'll lose your keys, your hair, and your memory. <laughs> If your daughter doesn't plug her heart into every live socket she passes, you'll come home to find your son has emptied your refrigerator, dragged it to the curb, and called the used appliance store for a pickup, drug money. There's a Buddhist story of a woman chased by a tiger. When she comes to a cliff, she sees a sturdy vine and climbs halfway down. But there's also a tiger below, and two mice one white, one black, scurry out and begin to gnaw on the vine. <laughs> At this point, she notices a wild strawberry growing from a crevice. She looks up, down at the mice. Then she eats the strawberry. So here's the view, the breeze, the pulse in your throat. Your wallet will be stolen, you'll get fat. <laughs> Flip on the bathroom tiles of a foreign hotel and crack your hip, you'll be lonely. Oh, taste how sweet and tart the red juice is, how the tiny seeds crunch between your teeth. Mm -hmm. This is called Homily for the Dill. If you have your health, you have everything. Is something that's said to cheer you up. When your beloved looks at you, guilty as a dog, with a scarlet silk thong hanging from his jaw. <laughs> or you get pregnant while you're still nursing, literally. He takes you from behind as the baby suckles. And in your drowsy confusion, you want him. That same fierce hunger that comes upon you for sardines, burnt lamb chops, warm bread. Or it could be you lose your job at Happy Meals because you can't stop smudging the stars on those ten teeny American flags. I don't begrudge you your extravagant good health. May it blossom like a cherry tree. May the petals of your cardiovascular excellence and the accordion polka of your lungs sweeten the mornings of your loneliness. <laughs> but for the ill, for you with nerves that fire like a rusted out burner on an old barbecue, with bones brittle as spun sugar, with a migraine hammering like a blacksmith in the flaming hot forge of your skull, may you have something, even if you can't have everything. May you at least be spared from friends who say, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. <laughs> <laughs> and ask what gifts being sick has brought you. May they just keep their mouths shut <laughs> and bring you French chocolates and daffodils and maybe a small original Matisse. <laughs> so you can look out at the boats floating on the dappled pink water. And if the world were really fair, you'd get that crimson underwear and someone to slip it very gently down your paralyzed thighs with their delicate, perfect teeth. Oh, I'll end with this short poem called The World Has Need of You, and it begins with a line from Rilke uh, as the epigraph, everything here seems to need us. I can hardly imagine it. As I walk to the lighthouse, feeling the ancient prayer of my arms swinging in counterpoint to my feet. Here I am, suspended between the sidewalk and twilight, the sky dimming so fast it seems alive. 
What have you felt the invisible tug between you and everything? A boy on a bicycle rides by, his white shirt open, flaring behind him like wings. It's a hard time to be human. We know too much and too little. Does the breeze need us? The cliffs, the gulls? If you've managed to do one good thing, the ocean doesn't care. But when Newton's apple fell toward the earth, the earth, ever so slightly, fell toward the apple as well. <laughs> student for seven years and uh, she is uh, wonderful for her uh, imagery, her big heart, her surprising turns uh, are all absolutely delightful. Uh, her work has been published in Lyric, Poetry Northwest, Alaska Quarterly Review, The Sun, and The Crab Orchard Review, as well as in a variety of other journals. Her poems have also appeared in anthologies. Uh, one is In a Fine Frenzy, Poets Respond to Shakespeare, and also the anthology Intimate Kisses. And last year, she was a finalist for the 2010 New Letters Prize in Poetry. She lives in Santa Cruz, California. Please welcome to Nusha. Thank you. 